Think I got an ant problem? Yeah. Hello. Welcome back to Garden Fever. I'm Corey Lefevre, your host, coming to you direct from northern Utah in the United States. I want to thank you for being here today. I truly appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about a subject that whether you're a farmer, whether you're growing indoor plants, a garden or whatever, at some point, and no matter whether you're an amateur or a pro, at some point you're going to run into this problem and that's garden pests. Uh, it's, it's plagued mankind from the very beginning and that's insects. They're like weeds with legs. Uh, it's inevitable. At some point you're going to run into a bug or some sort of a critter that is going to devastate your crops. So today we're going to be talking about some of the most popular or the ones that are most common that you're going to face, uh, give you some ideas, maybe some home remedies and some information about those pests to help you uh, deal with them and combat them. And uh, most of all, I'm going to give you some tips on pre preventative ways. And that's truly the better way to uh, resist pests is to prevent them in the first place. Yeah, that's probably your best bet. But with that, let's get right into it. But before we do, will you do me a favor and hit that like button? I truly appreciate it. It helps the YouTube algorithm, helps me get noticed, helps get the information out there. And I would be very grateful if you did that. And let's get going. Ants. They're ones that are often left unnoticed, but will can be very, very damaging to your garden uh, for, for a few reasons. One, once they establish a, a colony, they, they're very hard to get rid of, or can be hard to get rid of. Two, they actually have a symbiotic relationship with aphids. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but they'll actually take aphids and carry them up to the plant leaves and uh, establish them there. Why do ants do that? Because when aphids uh, eat or drink out of the plant, they excrete what's called a honeydew, and it'll make your leaves all shiny and and uh, leave their marks everywhere but that is rich in sugars and the ants will actually establish aphids on your plants so that they can harvest the honeydew so it's a symbiotic relationship that they have but they it's a double whammy they don't only also establish colonies around the roots why do they do that because the roots act as a support system for their homes but that creates too much air it over aerates the roots and causes damage to the plants but it also, they'll establish aphids around your plants. So it's like a double whammy. Another thing that ants do is they like to be to high ground. They don't like water flooding. So that is one tip that you can to get rid of ants is flood it. This can overwater your plants, so you have to be careful. I, I find that ants are most damaging to my pots and raised beds more than on the ground because they don't like to be on the low points. They, like, they tend to be uh, up higher uh, so pots they'll once they get into a pot and a queen gets into a pot it it, uh, it can be really damaging to your plants I've had them full-on kill plants that have been established for a long time so what are some good methods one you can flood it uh, if you constantly flood it you cave their cave in their systems they'll eventually move uh, two you can take cinnamon and cover the ant hole cover it at the source uh, they don't like cinnamon, it kills uh, beneficial fungi. But this is a double whammy and a double-edged sword too because beneficial fungi can be good to your plants as well. So you, those two you need to kind of be careful not to overwater your plant or kill all the fungus, but you, want, you can put a lot of cinnamon at the source and that can often uh, cause them to move as well. Uh, the best way to do it as far as killing them, a natural way without using chemicals, you can always buy pesticides at the store. I hesitate to do that. I don't like to put pesticides around my food. So the best way is to use borax and sugar. Borax is all natural and what you do is you do two parts of sugar to one part uh, borax and you mix it up into kind of a paste. You don't want it to, uh, too much of a liquid and you don't want it dry because they'll actually separate the sugar and the borax. But if you have it at a paste and you put it close to the to the ant hill, they'll eat it and bring it back to the queen and actually kill it. Another thing, a method that you can do that I've never tried but I have, I have heard of this method being somewhat effective is you can take another ant hill scoop up as much of it as you can and actually set it on an, on the anthill that you don't want and they end up fighting and 
what happens is, is it creates a stench of death and battle, like a battlefield, and both colonies end up moving. I've never tried this, but it is a suggestion. Uh, ants are beneficial in a lot of ways. Some of these insects that I've talked about are beneficial in a lot of ways, but can be very damaging to the garden. So just like weeds, weeds can be beneficial too because we need living roots in the soil to create topsoil, but they absorb the water and the nutrients from the plants that you want. So it's really about pest management, not necessarily pest extermination. So clear them out of your garden and your raised beds and your pots, but not necessarily genocide all all insects in, in a certain radius or whatever. I, I will probably make videos in the future detailing each individual pest because there's a lot of information regarding each one that I've talked about today. But I just wanted to do a brief video of the pests that have plagued my garden. And as I've said before, uh, it, the longer you garden, the more this will become evident as an issue. Uh, you're going to run into these problems. So educating yourself and, and finding methods to control these pests will be almost necessary in your garden. Aphids. And there are many different kinds of aphids. Uh, but aphids seem to be one that they can have a, a third eye or a sixth sense, if you will, on plants. If your plant is struggling, it's weak, it's got low water, struggling with the heat, has bad soil, anything like that, which is preventative, uh, they just seem to zero in. So aphids are small sap sucking insects. They kind of are pear shaped, very small, but they have, what makes aphids uh, difficult to eradicate and easily get out of control is once they start breeding, the females can actually reproduce without males, which means that even as they lay eggs, they may be already pregnant to before they're even hatched. Also, the eggs can overwinter, making them, once they get established, they can be really difficult to get rid of. It's called uh, telescoping generations is how it's done, uh, which means they can reproduce without even males being there, kind of asexual. Uh, one good, one place that they like to hide is underneath the leaves. A sign of this is the leaves will start to curl. So you want to look underneath and they tend to congregate around the, the inner part of the stem here that I'll show you. And they, if you spray them off and it has kind of like a powdery white liquid, it's usually because of aphids. However, they do come in different colors from green, black, red, yellow, brown, and be, can be even kind of furry. So there are a lot of different varieties of aphids. So it's kind of hard to identify because they are incredibly small. Uh, here's some examples that I have had trouble with in my own garden. Uh, the best way to deal with them is to, to wash them off, remove dead plants, uh, recognize the signs that you see uh, that show aphids. And they, once they, how aphids work is they actually leach. They're almost like a leech where they start draining the water and they start poking little holes and, and, and absorbing all the liquid out of the leaves. This makes it really hard for the plant to struggle and eventually they'll kill it if you aren't, aren't proactive. Uh, you can give it a, a soap bath. Another thing is another garden pest, which is kind of a pest. It's a pest if it gets out of control, will actually eat the eggs. Ladybugs do the same thing. It's real hard to keep ladybugs in these uh, other insects that eat aphids in the garden. So you need to create an environment where it's conducive for them to live there in a balance, uh, but that can help. Another one I'd like to talk about is earwigs. Earwigs have a, a reputation of crawling into your brain and eating your brain, that's a myth, but they can eat your plants and they can get infested. They like to live under moist conditions and they come out at night. They do eat the eggs of other insects, so they can be somewhat beneficial. You don't necessarily want to genocide all the earwigs, but at the same time, you get too many of them. They can be devastating to your crops. One thing with the earwigs is you can roll up some newspaper and kind of wet it down, maybe put a little bit of bacon grease or something within the circle of the thing, and they'll, they'll swarm in there and, and do it as kind of like a trap. Uh, you can also do lids where it has bacon grease or something like that in it to where it attracts them and they end up drowning. 
let's talk about grasshoppers. Grasshoppers and locusts. We've all heard the dreaded locusts. There's locust swarms that can come in through an area and just totally wipe out all the all the greenery. Grasshoppers can be very, very damaging to your crops. Uh, praying mantises are a good way to, to prevent that. However, just like the ladybug, it's really hard to uh, keep praying mantises in your garden because uh, they like to wander around. So really what you want to do is establish them to where they're laying egg sacs in your garden and they come out each year with the grasshoppers. That can help. But they can also eat beneficial uh, bugs as well like bees and, and whatnot. I've done another video on that before. I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, the slug. Everybody hates the slug. Snails and slugs. Slugs can be very, very damaging to your to your crops. They are basically a snail without a shell. Uh, like the snail, they use mucus to slide all over the place and they can be incredibly damaging to your garden. Uh, one way to discourage them is to create a drier condition in your garden, not so moist, uh, which is kind of counterproductive to your plants because you kind of want the moisture. So uh, a water-wise garden is a good way to do that. You can uh, usually identify them by seeing their, their trail of mucus that they leave behind. Um, you can grow shade plants that slugs don't like. That's another way to do it. You can leave beer traps. Uh, it's debatable whether eggshells uh, and diatomaceous earth work. Uh, if you do, I uh, have a video on, on one of the biggest mistakes with that. I believe that it, you have to have small particles in order for it to work, uh, but that is debatable. Uh, copper, copper borders, they don't like the, the copper as they slide over it. Here's an example of box elder bugs where I just put a pool uh, near the infestation and came out the next morning and literally thousands of them were dead. So that's a good example. Spiders also are another good preventative thing. I know we hate the, the cobwebs and they look dirty and they're, they're not exactly appealing, but spiders are a good way to control pests. The bugs get caught in them, the spiders eat them, and they don't eat your crops. Uh, be careful of poisonous spiders, of course, like black widows, brown recluses, uh, ones like that, because you, especially if you have kids, it can be somewhat dangerous and you don't want those to get out of control as well. So it's very obvious that uh, pests can be a problem in the garden. The best way to do it is to prevent them. And, the, and how you do that is one, have good soil, two, have the right amount of sun and the right amount of water for the plant because if the plant is hardy and it has a strong growth, it will prevent the bugs from actually getting them on their own. All plants have defense mechanisms. They all are subject to certain pests, but if they're healthy and they're strong and they're getting the nutrients, sun and water that they need, they'll prevent it on their own. One home remedy that I really do like is to mix Dr. Brommer's soap, because it kills the eggs, uh, mixed with neem oil and spread it all over the plants. This, does, this isn't 100% cure for everything, but it is a good shield for a lot of pests for your garden. You can use diatomaceous earth, which is crushed up shells that get into hard body or hard exoskeletons and it can kill them. It can affect beneficial insects such as bees. So you want to do it when the bees are headed to the nest and they're cooling off in the evening or early in the morning. Uh, and another negative to that is if it rains or you put water over the plants, it eventually wears down and the shield dis dis dissipates, which is also the same for neem oil. So with that, I'll go ahead and uh, finish and wrap up this video. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope it helps you in your garden. Uh, remember, pests can be beneficial, but they can also be very damaging. So preventative measures is the best way to go. Uh, I'm Corey Lefever. Thank you for watching. And remember, make this world a paradise one yard at a time.